Don't forget to implement the movement components, the movement functions, parameters and methods inside the tick component as described before. Look for the tick component and get yourself an idea of what you're going to check. We're going to need the tick component, the perform movement component, the perform movement method, the replicate move to server, the physics movement component, physics movement function, which was called start new physics and we are going to implement our own custom fizz rolling function to say that we are rolling as a vehicle in addition to all the data necessary for the network prediction interface i'm going to add another struct that is going to be used for our fizz card input place this struct on the this card movement component header file. This is similar to what you will find in the Fizz X vehicles plugin, and also in the Fizz card move replication, we're going to implement another input struct for our vehicle. So head on to the Fizz card move replication, and at the very top, insert this struct, which contains the input parameter for steering, throttle, brake, and handbrake. Now we can continue on with our Fizz Card class. Remember to remove everything that has to do with move base. And also, as we have included peg angular acceleration and angular velocity, we're going to also include angular acceleration and angular velocity in the server mob functions. Every time you utilize location or velocity you are going to upgrade with new quaternion and new angular velocity remember to do that as well on the constructor and on the movement component equ equivalent functions i have also included a struct which includes the fees card input state in each of the server movement functions the beauty and difficulty of implementing the network prediction interface into your own classes is the fact that everything works in conjunction. All the network prediction data structs and functions, they have to work at the same level that the movement functions work. For instance, in your tick component, as you may remember, you go all the way to the controller character move which is a function that determines what to do in case we are the server or the client. Right from the very beginning in the replicate move to server, we are unpacketing every, every kind of information that we need to replicate in a single package. This package is then sent to the server after the local movement component has achieved its results and replicated into the server and the server with the network prediction interface performs the correction and the prediction right off the bat if we have connected every component as it should be the difficulty lies in the fact that you have to override everything before you can even start to see the movement progress every function that is set to replicate has to be defined in the parent class and its movement component class now i'm going to give you a description of what i did to implement the network prediction interface with my custom movement component first let's go to thick component there we go then to the function that is defined as controller character move in this function depending on whether we are a client or a server we're going to end up moving on to perform movement Inside perform movement, the very first thing we do is update state if we have a valid updated component. Update state is the function that transforms the controller input into a throttle and the steering input into the acceleration vector, corresponding to the vector in size x, to the forward posi position, and the acceleration in size z to the steering input. After we have the valid data to the input, we then proceed to generate the velocities and go to the function which is defined as start new physics. In this function, 
As you may remember, the original function was when we were performing physics walking or falling or flying depending on our movement mode. However, right now we only use one movement mode, it's called Fizz Rolling. You look closely, both implementations for whether it is simulating physics or not are exactly the same, except for this function which is called Apply Accumulated Force. Let's take a look first at Fizz Rolling. Fizz Rolling, by the way, performs another check if we are simulating physics, we have the option to generate movements in Euclidean transformation or not. Euclidean transformation is the type of transformation in which we implement movement through acceleration, not imparting velocity changes directly. If we are not simulating physics, then we are simu simulating kinematic movement. In this case, we only apply the safe move of data component. Finishing the fizz rolling function, in the case that we are simulating physics, we are going to move on to the apply accumulated forces, which is the function which imparts the forces to the fizz card root into the simulation. If not, then we already have the resulting motion position from the calculation from the move component. Then we perform the set updated component to hard code whatever it is necessary for the pawn movement component implementation. After start new physics is finished, we are once again in perform movement. All the resulting positions and parameters are then stored and the final position for this tick is stored in this place. After that, if we were on replicate move to server, after perform movement is finished, all the data is stored in the network prediction stroke and then depending on whether we are in a simulated physics or not, we are going to proceed to call the function call server move pack and or call server move. If we were in a simulated physics, we would postpone this process until after the post physics tick component is called. In the case that we are finally reaching the final destination of replicate move to server, whether it is in post physics or not, we unpack the parameters and these parameters are sent as usual. Finally, when the server gets the information from the client, it will once again perform all the local position, which is going to be the authoritative version of all the client in the server with the client's input. That's why we included the input state. Once the server performs the move autonomous, in the move autonomous function, it's where the server calls the perform movement for proxies, that is, client instances on the server which are controlled by remote clients. Finally, after everything's done, the server performs another check. When the server performs the server move packet server receive function, then at the end calls the server move handle move data, which in turn ends up calling the server move perform movement, and this function finally calls the server move handle client error when all the optimizations and movement have been authorized. If the server detects that the client is not in the correct position or rotation or velocity or whatever, then the server is going to send a function to each client correct value. In the server move handle client error, the server then packs the correct parameters and sends them to the client. Then the client gets the information and executes the function client adjust position implementation. This is the very end of the adjust position methods. In this function is where the client is going to take the information from the server and impart the correct parameters into the local simulation. After that, well, generally this is perform each tick right before each tick component. Once again, in the tick component, the function the client then checks if there is a valid client position for update from the server and then performs the client update position after server update. This is the function in which the all the list of valid movements get sent to the a valid starting point and then performed in one single tick. The function client update position after server update it's the most interesting part of all the network prediction interface. 
This is the place where each client, when the server calls a significant amount of correction needed, the client returns to a position in time and then with the valid movement operations sent from the server in a list of packages, it replaces all the valid movements in a for loop and ends in a correct position. Now the server and client are in the same space, the same position, same velocity, same parameters, but the client didn't notice the return to the replay system. However, in physics simulations, the client does not does notice it because this for loop cannot be performed in a single tick. That's where the immediate mode from FISEX takes place, but that's going to be implemented in another tutorial. After this, when the replay system finishes, we now return to the tick component and perform once again all the calculations for each tick. As of Unreal 4.26, the client sends the package information to the server in a further compressed packet with the function call server move packet. In this function, you will have to override the function client field network move data with your own parameters. In my case, I added a vector called client quad axis and the float called client quad angle. These values store the quaternion from the saved rotation. You also have to override the function serialize with your custom parameters. In my case, I added the ang acceleration dot net serialize and AR operator client quad angle. You also need to override the serialize function of the response data container struct. In this place, I have added the net new quaternion and new angular velocity. In essence, all the information that you want both your server and client to be in complete integrity, you have to define that and then look for them in your own code. Be sure to check what is the information that you finally need. In my case, in this example, I decided that we wanted the local position, the quaternion rotation, the velocity and the angular velocity. This information you, you will have to override the network prediction data structs with the information of the parameters that you decide. And in every place that you have added some new information to store, you have to check where in the code was actually implemented for you to aggregate whatever you would chose as well, in every function and in every call. To package your own information in all the functions and methods for them to work naturally with the network prediction interface. The implementation of the network prediction interface is not a one-size-fits-all kind of project. You have to think for yourself and decide what kind of information you want to replicate and you would like to need in your projects. Let's see, if we increase the packet lag in the simulation to 1000, that's one second of lag, take a look at that. In your client, the client 1, the screen in the upper left corner, we, we are seeing as a client would see its local instance, its immediate response, but the server gets the information one second late and sends the information as packets one second late as well to the client. Look how the movement is stored in some sort of checkpoint system, that's the replay system. This works as well for the skeletal mesh root component if we simulate physics, only if we are not using the Euclidean transformation. Let's take a look, there you have it. If we use the Euclidean transformation, the replay system is not working. Look how much does it take for the server to send the position correction to the client. And the client doesn't experience a seamless transition for movement from the correction to the, its own velocity or parameter. That's because the replay system doesn't work in a single tick. 
Now, if we turn off the Euclidean transformation, we can see a dramatic change in the implementation. And there you have it. Look at that. The client doesn't experience such a dramatic experience in the transformation corrections, but still the client doesn't get the feeling of immediate transform. Again, this is because the replay system doesn't work in a team. Let's see if we can get this to work once again. It looks like the system gave up. There you have it. If you look at the yellow spheres, that's why, that's when the replay system tries to implement all the corrections in a single tick. But this is not working because all the corrections are waiting on to the finish of the simulation tick. This can be upgraded by using the immediate mode of physics, which is a local simulation that can be performed in a single tick without performing a simulation of all the scene, only the vehicle in our case. Look how in our physics simulation we have we don't have correct integrity between the client and the server version. The server version is authoritative. The client is doing whatever he wants. The network prediction interface works really well in classes which perform movement with kinematic movement. That is, if you don't use simulated physics, your classes using the network prediction interface will perform really well on multiplayer environments. Kinematic movement is the default and the most used type of movement implementation in video games. It is recommended to use better than physics to avoid problems like jittering and explosions and to have more control over the determinism, especially if in PhysX. The integration of this network prediction interface into your classes will depend entirely up to you. You have to decide which parameters you want to replicate, which functions and parameters you want to have perfect integrity between clients and servers and what's the look and feel of your playing system for clients over the network. Please feel free to contact me if you would like the help of my consultation services to help you integrate these and other systems into your own real projects. Let's bring out awesome ideas to life together. Like, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to share this video. Thanks for watching. See ya. Peace.